Get ready to be inspired by a true force of courage and resilience. Introducing Crystal Tomlinson, author and public speaking coach extraordinaire. A beacon of courage and empowerment, Crystal is known worldwide for her ability to ignite the stage and engage audiences. As the founder and lead strategist of the Success Farm Life Academy, Crystal's expertise lies in empowering individuals to master the art of public speaking and embrace their full potential. Today, she's here to share how she turned her side hustle into her main income generator. Without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to Crystal Tomlinson. I want to start off my, my story this morning with $500. Right? This is ten fifty dollars In 2020, this was all I had in my bank account. 2020, the middle of a pandemic, just lost my job and lost my income. And all I had was $500. I had no job, no income, no car, no house. The only thing I had was debt. Debt that was 10 times the $500 that I actually had in my bank account. Debt and responsibility as the primary caregiver for my two-year-old daughter. Now, I don't know if I'm talking to in the room or in the chat, people who have had, you know, just smooth sailing, no moments of desperation, destitution, leading into depression. If I'm talking to somebody who has been in that place before, let me get a little amen. amen. And if you're in the chat, you can put up the, the, prayer, the prayer hand, the prayer sign, or type out the word, Amen. But many, if not all of us, have been at a place where we were destitute. But one of the things I've learned not to do is to curse my hardship. Whenever I'm at ground zero, one thing I am sure is going to come out of it is progress. Because even if I get down, I don't stay down. So in that moment, as they often say, necessity is the mother of invention or innovation, and I had to innovate. I had to do a couple of things, though, the first of which was to make a decision. I looked at my daughter and I realized that, one, I'm deciding that I'm never going to be broke again because having $500 in your bank account and $5,000 in debt and a child that is depending on you to get it together, mom, I was never going to be broke again. Sassy? Now, if anybody in this room has ever been broke, a couple things we can agree on. Broke, broke vibes. Don't want to go anywhere, don't want to see anybody, not in the mood for life, really, and we're just taking it day by day. The other thing we can agree on, if you've ever been there, broke, broke confidence. At a time when you're supposed to be adulting, because this is not teenaging anymore. Adulting. When I'm a teenager, I can have all the potential in the world. But when I'm adulting, sis, you need to be able to pay your bills. So the brook was also broking my confidence that I was doing this adulting thing properly. But the other thing that brook did for me was challenge and attempt to break my faith. Because God did say it's supposed to be a plan to prosper me and not to harm me. But I was wondering if I was in the wrong plan. You know, when them come to flu and them order a plan for home and a plan for business, may I wonder if God give me the wrong plan because this never feel like the prosperity plan. This one did feel like the hardship and the sufferation plan. And my faith was now in question. But I made a decision I was not going to be broke again. The second decision that I made was that I'm going to earn enough money to pay myself more than any other company was ever able to pay me in my life and enough money to ensure that my daughter could have access to the world. I felt like she deserved that, and I knew it was my responsibility to create that for her. And the third thing I decided was that whatever I built, I could pass it on as an inheritance. Now, what that meant was I was also deciding not to take up a nine-to-five because I can't pass on a nine-to-five to my daughter. I can't say to the HR manager, excuse me, miss, could I get this in a safe deposit box and you hold on for it to 18 years? And when my daughter is big enough, you just give her the same job with the same salary plus inflation and the same benefits and the pension plan. Can't inherit any job that I was going to get from a company. So if I was deciding to pass something on to her, I had to create it. So essentially, in that moment of decision making, I was deciding to create. I was deciding to choose entrepreneurship, and I was deciding to choose 
innovation. Now, in order to do that, I needed a little direction. We're in the middle of COVID, can't really find a lot of people to talk to, to engage with and to talk business because everybody's essentially closing shop or stepping out of social spaces for safety concerns. So in order to get the direction, I had to lean into digital. And that's why I'm on this stage today. Because the ability to move from $500, from broke and from unemployed, from having to move back in with my mother at the age of 30, listen, if there's anybody who's ever had to do that, you know it's a humbling experience. From there to being able to pay myself 200 times what I have ever been paid by anybody else, all on my own effort. That told me that 200% increase. There's a joke about parliament in there, but I'm not gonna make it. But I was able to increase my own income coming out of the direction that I got from digital tools. So I went on my Instagram, 200,000 uh, plus followers at the time, and I clicked that analytics um, section. I was able to define for myself the info for, for my audience that I was serving, the demographics that would help me to create a product that would serve them. I found out who my audience was, primarily women, the age of my audience, 24 to 44, the main locations that they were in, the USA, Canada, the UK, Jamaica, which told me they were also English speakers primarily. I started to look at their responses to some of my content that I was posting online, and the things that they were asking me to do more of, the questions they were asking me to answer in the DM and when I put up the stickers on IG, and through digital tools, I was able to identify the audience demographic and identify the service that I could provide for them that would bring value and solve a problem that they would pay for. So through digital, I recognized that speaking, which was my side hustle, was the thing that people wanted more of from me. But not only did they want to hear me speak, they wanted me to teach them how to speak well as well. So I said, let me sit down and do a little more work, a little more research, and of course, great old Google gave me the data I needed about public speaking, about what challenged men and women to get up and use their voice, about how much money companies were losing because of poor communication, about the limited number of women who were in boardrooms making big decisions, advocating, pitching their plans and ideas, starting their businesses, doing it in limited numbers because they were afraid to open their mouths and speak up. Because in the, the living rooms at their home, as children, they were told to be quiet. And so in the boardrooms at work, that same mentality was still present. So from childhood to adulthood, they were afraid to speak up. So digital allowed me to figure out who I was serving, what they wanted, where they were, what language they spoke, and of course, what was the best currency to set up my platform in so I could receive money. Unfortunately, the best currency was not the JMD. So I was also able to move my earning from JMD currency to USD currency. Praise God for that. Praise God for that. So now I talk to people in US dollars when we talk about business, right? But from that moment on, I was able to dig deeper using digital tools. So I was doing the crowdsourcing to find out the ideas and the tools. And then when I settled on the idea, the next thing I did was to build the platform. After doing a little research, you know, I found platforms that I could use because remember, it's COVID. So where am I going to be executing these public speaking training programs? Had to be online. Who was going to pay for it? Because everybody was talking about job losses and restrictions and limited profit and not even being employed at all. But I did my research, found out who I would be serving, created my marketing collateral, and then I used Teachable to build my online course. Through Teachable, I was able to do things like drip content to my audience and also enforce the lecture order. So people who are registered for my course, you can't just scan through the videos and tell me that you finish and get your certificate. You have to watch them in a particular order and you have one week to watch this one and two weeks to watch this one and I'm able to track my student progression and know if most of my students are stopping at 25% of course material, 50% of course material, 75% of course material. And what the data tells me also allows me to do other things like feed them a information through email prompts and so started my account with ConvertKit and used ConvertKit to communicate which is an email marketing um, platform for anybody who's not aware of it communicate again with my students ConvertKit also tells me how many people open my emails and if they open my emails if they click the link and if people did not open my emails, I can retarget them with another email, changing the headline, perhaps changing the opening line, perhaps changing the opening photograph to encourage them to click the link that is in the body of that email. So I'm using data and I'm using tools and me not being a techie, I'm so impressed that I'm even able to build a course 
on a digital platform, to build out an email marketing list and an email marketing strategy. I'm no graphic designer. Arts is not in my background when we talk about drawing and creating. But God bless Canva. In the name of Jesus, Canva was helping me to create graphic, create real covers, create um, small videos, editing my videos for YouTube and then changing the, the, the frame and editing it for reels. I'm creating content with so much ease. And now um, Canva allows you to do AI sourcing of either the images, of your caption, of what you're actually putting on the graphics and on the video. So it's taking a lot of the time and human effort out of thinking about what you want to create. If you know your niche, if you know the, the core what and the idea you're trying to communicate, you punch that into Canva and they're generating so many templates for you now. What we also have is ChatGPT. So what I started with my newsletter on LinkedIn to help me generate more professional leads for women in corporate spaces who wanted to be trained as public speakers, my LinkedIn newsletter became a lead magnet. And through that lead magnet convert kit, because we're sending out emails as well, I'm able to generate an email marketing plan for people who are interested in public speaking or public speaking coaching. And then we continue now to be able to schedule one-on-one -on -one session with my students. I don't have no big administrative team. All I have is acuity. And I have the minimum plan on acuity, so they're barely getting that $15 from me each month. But it allows me to schedule my one-on-one -on -one meetings so they don't overlap. It sends out reminders to the persons that I'm scheduled to speak with so that I don't forget and they don't forget. And I'm able to also track at the end of each month how many appointments we got, how many were kept, how many were canceled, how many were rescheduled. So I feel a lot more organized, well-paced, and less overwhelmed by unread emails that I would need to go through or hire somebody to go through. And so digital tools have, over the last two years, allowed me to move from a place of unemployment, no pay, as I said, no savings, no backup plan, no pension plan, to a place where I'm now earning more than anybody has ever been able to pay me in a currency that would make anybody kin them teeth, and then using Stripe on the back end of my website, because again, I'm no website developer, but bless Bluehost and my ability to add as a, an additional extension, uh, Builder Beaver or Beaver Builder. So I'm building web pages, I'm building platforms to sell my product after a simple tutorial from one of my good friends who's a digital marketer. So I'm a website developer uh, by day and a public speaking coach as well uh, at the same time. And then through Beaver Builder, uh, I'm building the website, managing and hosting it on uh, Bluehost, and we do that collaboratively because there are a group of us who has websites, nobody wants to pay that one hosting bill for the year, so we share the asset and therefore share the cost of maintaining that asset. And then, of course, payments. I receive my payments through Stripe. If you've ever had to jump over the hurdles and run the sprint race of PayPal, you know why I wouldn't recommend that one as a Jamaican, right? It's very difficult for us to be able to do business with PayPal because of concerns they have with our um, financial system. So I was able to do it through Stripe. And the beauty of Stripe, as opposed to receiving my payments through Teachable, I can get it at greater frequency. So with Stripe, I could get a daily payout if I want to. So when I'm having a very good week, I don't have to pay extra to get daily payouts because the money be coming in. And then through Stripe, I'm also able to calculate my taxes that are due um, overseas. So, of course, it helps to have a U.S. bank account. Um, and my, my mother is now complaining because I've linked the earnings to her accounts that she can't access some of the government help because she can't explain how she's making this kind of money coming into the account and saying that she needs some help from the government. But it's a blessing because there was a time when that kind of money was not accessible to me. There was nobody I could look to to create that for me. And through digital tools, through maximizing what was available to me on my phone, I was able to create for myself. I was able to earn for myself. And I'm in the process of building for myself and for my daughter. So when we talk about innovation and using digital tools to unlock potential, me name, Potential Unlocked. Me name, Digital Power Ranger. Call me the Pink Ranger. Because I'm out here learning, maximizing, developing, growing, in my understanding and literacy around digital tools. And I'm always happy to share what I've learned, what has worked for me, and how we're able to maintain, to build, and now scale from an online course to designing one-on-one -on -one personal coaching 
for women in corporate spaces, entertainment, athletics, who want to learn how to speak more fluently at the drop of a hat with the cameras in front of you for global broadcast without a script like I'm doing for you right now. None of that would have been possible without the use of digital tools. So I want to leave a couple of things with you. As you're moving into a digital space, if you are already there and trying to stay focused and encouraged about what you can do and how you can expand, please remember, a lot of people are watching, but nobody's coming. Any problem you need to solve for yourself, whatever you need to earn, whatever debt you need to take yourself out of, however you need to be providing for your family, Lots of people are watching, but nobody's coming, which means that you have to be your own hero in this space. There are unique and innate talents that you are born with. Sit down in them, like a, a, a horse with a saddle. Sit down in it, hold on to the reins, and ride it through. The other thing I want you to be willing to do is to take risks on yourself and your ideas. If 12 months have passed and you don't take a risk on one idea, one concept, one business plan, you're doing yourself an injustice because your potential is waiting for you to test it, to fail at it, to learn something, and then to test better next time. Because that's really all success is. Testing until you test good enough to create that winning product. So take a risk on yourself. And in the moment that you're taking the risk, please embrace failure. Nothing is wrong with failing. In fact, what I call failure is an opportunity to eat dirt. So when I drop, I prefer to drop on my face. And there are a lot of people who don't want to drop on their face, right? Kind of cuter to drop on your back. Maybe when you drop on your back, you can pose and pretend like you are just being a gymnast. But I prefer to drop on my face. Because when I drop on my face, I get to focus. When I drop so, I'm looking around to see who see me. When I drop on my face, I have to focus. But the other advantage of falling on my face is that I get to eat some dirt. And on that ground, whatever is at ground zero, there is something there for me to learn. So if I drop in gravel, I'm going to learn what gravel tastes like. If I drop in mud, I'm going to learn how the mud consistency is different from the gravel consistency last time. And I'm learning something about soil formation. Whatever it is I'm falling face down in, I'm humble enough to ask myself, well, what can this teach me? And if the lesson I learn is not for my immediate application, I'm still patient because there will come a time when I have to use the lesson from the failure to move to another level. And the last thing I want to encourage you to do is to remain persistent. There's a powerful book by Angela Duckworth called Grit. And I encourage every entrepreneur to read that book. It's opening up a whole new world for me because now I have language for what I have been doing and in some instances struggle to do, which is to stay the course of whatever decision you have made. Determination matters. In fact, for me, the formula for success is simply this. Decision, knowing what you want and cutting off all other options so you are not distracted and your time, money is not spent pursuing several things instead of the most essential thing. Direction, knowing exactly where you are going and the power of technology helps you to make the most informed decision about the direction that you're taking. And when you choose the direction to stay persistent and determined in getting to that goal. goal. Imagine if Usain Bolt had started his 100-meter journey, seen the success, watching himself grow, and then instead of continuing to be determined and moving one step in front of the other, saying, can win the world championship, win at the Olympic level, set the, the Olympic record, set the world record, all of which are now unbreakable, he had looked to the side and said, boy, I think I could have tried long jump since my foot's so long. It was difficult to stay in the lane, and I'm sure Shelley and Fraser Price, Elaine Thompson here, can share a similar story. It is difficult to stay in your lane. It is not easy to finish a race when you feel like you're at the back. It is not, it's not easy to finish a race when the people in the stands are not cheering for you. But one of the things they have taught me is that Managa leave my lane. And I'm also not going to give up on this talent and this skill and this journey and this decision I have made to commit myself fully to this task. So I encourage you to hold that in constant, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and allow the momentum that will build from the consistent steps in a key and critical direction to turn over the profit and unlock the potential that exists for you and your business.
Thank you so much for listening.